FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. We are hearing that the conflict right now between Israel and Hamas is now escalating because Hamas just absolutely refuses to live in peace with anyone that is around it. And so we've been uh, following that. Joining me right now, Evan Pokra, he's been on the show before. You can find him at mukata.blogspot.com, M-U-Q-A-T-A. Evan, uh, our prayers and thoughts are, are with your family. Uh, and uh, just give us the latest, and, and I hope everyone's okay. How's everyone holding up? Yeah, thank God. We're out of range. We're north of Jerusalem, and we're well away from the from the action. But uh, no, we know. I know. I have a, a lot of friends in the area, and uh, I have a very close friend who's who's currently in the army, serving really on the border with 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 Gaza. And uh, it looks like there's going to be a large uh, ground operation over the next couple of days, and he's going to be one of the first people in. So uh, everybody's prayers are certainly uh, appreciated. Well, we we definitely will be praying for you and your family and everyone over there because this is. I mean, how how many days has it been before Israel um, acted to defend it? You know, we know that the Iron Dome was intercepting rockets. There have been hundreds of rockets fired from Gaza in uh, a number of days, and it seems as though the general opinion, of course, not just from people on the left, but you know, the United Nations and so on and so forth, is that well, you just really shouldn't act to defend. You know, Israel shouldn't defend itself, and if it does, we will mischaracterize it as an attack. I mean, how long? Israel has had a lot of patience in dealing with this. Well, if you take into consideration that before the last couple days, uh, about 1,200 rockets have been fired at Israel this year alone. Wow. So um, about a month ago, I guess two, three weeks ago, after the the, uh, Islamic holiday of, of Eid, or right around there, it really started. They really started ramping up the amount of rockets, um, and it, w- obviously, with uh, with the after the elections, um, they even started kicking up an additional notch. And it was only really yesterday or th- this past week that Israel is uh, has really started going into to full on uh, war mode, which and it all really kicked off yesterday. Mm-hmm. With uh, the uh, the killing of the, uh, I guess the the head of the uh, the military wing of of the the Hamas, um, Ahmed uh, uh, Jabari. Yes, an Operation Pillar of Defense kick started, and now I've, I is it true? Because I've heard you know you you know how s- sometimes all of this can be. You have a lot of people out there reporting information. I've heard that the IDF is calling in thirty thousand reservists. Yeah, that was uh, the the. Defense Minister uh, just uh, gave the, the, the green light to, to call in those uh, that a much wider range of, mm-hmm. of reservists. Um, at, right within the last hour, actually, um, both the uh, Israeli Navy and Israeli Air Force have started a, a, a wide-ranging uh, bombing uh, campaign in, in the northern Gaza Strip. I know there's been a lot of uh, reports that uh, the House of Ismail uh, Hania, who's the, the senior political head of the, the Hamas, was hit uh, with no reports of anything happened to him, but mm. uh, that really uh, Israel is, is, has taken itself on itself to, to go after not just the, the, the people who are firing the rockets, but the, uh, the leadership of, of the, the terrorist organization. Right. And it's not as though, you know, we had one caller who called in and was like, oh, well, Israel, they're bombing schools, and all, which is just an absolute lie. And, and even when... Well, let me just clarify yes. that. Um, I, I know uh, earlier today uh, a, a one rocket launching site had been hit, but that's what happens when they place the rocket sites between a schoolyard and a mosque. So... <sighs> When you're firing rockets from schoolyards, schoolyards are going to get hit. And what does international um, law say and, about that? Well, international law, by the, according to the Geneva Convention, if a, uh, an army, or even a, in this case, it's even, a non, it's even worse, because these are non-conventional uh, for these are non-irregular uh, mm, yeah. forces, uh, fire from within civilian areas, they themselves are responsible for any collateral damage caused, and the defending army has actually no isn't has no reason not to fire back on on those belligerent forces right 
And even when Jaberi was targeted in his vehicle um, from the reports, the IDF had waited until the car was clear of any individuals who were standing in the street. They waited until it got uh, it left, uh, it got away from the crowds and and uh, then they were able to get the car and no one else. You know, it was just they got just the target that they wanted to get. And it's not as right. though they're so, sorry. Go ahead. Israel has, has certainly over the last uh, five, ten years has, has very much worked hard to perfect the the their these cases of, of attacking specific targets. To, to avoid any collateral damage. For instance, when they know um, a certain high-profile target is going to be in a certain house, what they'll do is they'll remove all the explosive material from bombs and put in cement instead to drop a bomb on the house so there's no explosion, there's no collateral damage, and only that specific house will get destroyed. Yeah, that's very smart. Yeah, well, I mean, and that's the thing, and that's what you don't see a lot of media entities reporting. CBS just yesterday had a report where they didn't even get into the reason why Israel was defending itself. They were just the way that they had they portrayed the entire uh, scenario was that Israel was just attacking Gaza, which is you know they they leave out the whole and not just the buildup of the past you know uh, from just this year alone. I mean, they've you know. 65 years of, 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 of previous buildup they leave out as well. And that's it's so frustrating, and I know it makes it really, really difficult. Um, and I'm sure you get frustrated as well. Well, it's, we've got to the point that we don't get frustrated. It's, just, it's like an ongoing joke. We like joke about it. Like, uh, CNN, for instance, said that Israel has struck 100 sites that they describe as terror sites. So uh, we <laughs> say... CNN describes itself as a news organization. No. Well, and this and, and, and looking at this, too, what do you think? And I realize that basically I'm asking you to do the equivalent of gaze into a crystal ball. But what how do you think this is going to play out? Because we, we hear that there's uh, there's now going to be, you know, boots on the ground going into Gaza. Um, is this I mean, if you could compare it to I keep thinking of maybe like the 22 day war or um, how do you think this is going to to to, to pan out? What do you hope happens? Look, I think. First of all, obviously, I think, uh, I hope uh, this ends with the, the complete destruction of, of uh, Hamas's entire infrastructure and, and finding the, the leaders, not only the, the, the low-level soldiers, but the leaders of Hamas and either killing them or arresting them and, and trying them for crimes against humanity and for crimes against, uh, for war crimes, because that's essentially what they're doing. They're com- they're sending out people to to fire onto civilian uh, populations, which, according to everybody else, is a crime against humanity. But when it goes against Israel, no, they're just fighting back against whatever. Mm-hmm. Even though it's been years since Israel had any any population in in the Gaza Strip. Right. And and that was done voluntarily uh, too. Correct. Yeah. Not that I was in favor of it, but uh, <laughs> because we, as people are from from our point of view, said if you leave, this is exactly what's going to happen, and you're going to end up with bombs on Tel Aviv, which is uh, what you saw today. Right. Exactly. And 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 two, I, I people I don't think understand um, uh, this. It's kind of like a powder keg as well, because when you consider the close proximity, I, a lot of individuals, I don't think that they realized how tightly packed Israel is and, and Gaza. I mean, you're you're sort of looking at an area that um, I know uh, a mutual friend of ours, Melissa Cloutier, had uh, yeah. put up a graphic. You're, you're looking at an area that is equivalent in size to New York City. Uh, about that. Yeah. Look, put it this way. I say we're far away from the action um, we're about 35 miles away from where the rockets are landing. Oh. So we're what, far away, but it's really, right. it's, I mean, it's an hour drive, about half an hour drive, and, yeah. and you're there. So. Exactly. And, and, and especially, too, what the, a, a rocket reached Tel Aviv uh, you know, today, our time, and that's what right. the first time since 91 that, that's, that they've had the air raid sirens yeah. going off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, big deal. yeah, very big deal. Well, we are praying for your safety and the resolution of this. And, um, you know, of course, obviously we stand with 
with uh, Israel and protecting itself. And I wish that we had an administration that reflected the uh, majority sentiment of Americans, really. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Evan. I appreciate it. Evan Pokeroy, everyone. Thanks. Thank you again, Evan.